Yo guys, what's going on? It's Rayuga here with another video. This time, we're going to be addressing an issue that I see a lot of people talk about, whether it's on Twitter or in Twitch chats. Well, it's more like they complain about it. However, we're going to be talking about Solo Queue Survivor and how to improve the experience that comes with it. Now, as some of you may know, Solo Queue is subjectively harder than when you're grouped up with your mates because there's a lack of communication and a lack of coordination. And even with this, as a solo player, there are ways that you can drastically improve not only your chance of survival, but your teammates as well. Now, a lot of people complain about solo queue have this main thing wrong with what they're doing with their perk build. A build should have four categorical perks, which I'll tell you in a second. And this is for solo queue specifically. A survivor that has, let's say, dead hard, decisive strike, spine chill, and iron will has four perks that are only in one category, and this category I would consider perks to help yourself. And now if you're going to play solo with this kind of build, the net chance of your entire team succeeding is a lot lower because you only have perks to keep you alive, but not perks to help your team or to give you information. Now the four categories that I came up with are as follows. You have your generator perks, so this includes things like Stakeout, This Is Not Happening, Prove Thyself, Detective's Hunch, Hoist, etc. Then you have your Aura Reading perks, such as Bond, Kindred, Alert, Aftercare, Object of Obsession, etc. Then you have a perk to help your teammates, so you have Will Make It, Borrowed Time, Autodidact, Leader, For The People, etc. And then you have perks to help yourself. You have Unbreakable, any of the Exhaustion perks, Inner Strength, Decisive Strike, Hope, etc. Now, some of these perks can fall under multiple categories, such as Better Together, which is a generator perk. However, it also shows the aura of the gen to your teammates, so you could consider it a team perk as well. An example of a good build following this layout We'll use the one that you see in the background. We have We'll Make It, which is a perk to help your teammates. We have Prove Thyself, which is a generator perk. We have Kindred, which is an aura reading perk. And then we have Second Wind, which is a perk to help myself. Now, let's go ahead and give you a bad example. We have a build that has Inner Strength, which is a personal perk. We have Unbreakable, which is another personal perk. We have Borrow Time, which is a team perk. And then we have Detective's Hunch, which is a generator perk. Now, while this build is still good because you can utilize Detective's Hunch to find totems to activate inner strength, and you have Borrow Time and Unbreakable in case the scenario calls, you still don't have an aura reading perk. And the reason these are so important is because they give you so much information, you know, about what's going on in the game, where your teammates are, things like that. So having each category, one perk, will help you immensely in your gameplay. Because every time you pick two perks from the same category, you're missing out on a part of the game that you're going to have either no way to help or no information regarding that. So as long as you follow the four categories while you're doing solo queue, you're going to have a perk to help you in almost all of these situations that you get in. You're going to be able to do your generators. You're going to be able to have information regarding where your team is, whether they're getting, you know, chased or something or, you know, people on the hook, all that kind of stuff. You are going to have information. You're going to have perks for your teammates. That way, if you get into situations where you seriously need to help somebody, you're going to have a perk to do so. And then you're going to have a perk for yourself to either, you know, heal yourself or stay hidden, anything like that. All of these combined, you're going to see a net gain and the way that your solo games are going and the way that you can contribute overall to the progress of the game. All right, so now that all of that's out of the way, the category perks and all that jazz, I now have compiled a list of things that you need to make sure happen in your game in order for it to be successful or at least relatively successful. So while you're in a game, what you need to do is you need to make sure you do at least one to two generators. You get at least one to two hook saves. You need to get chased by the killer 
for at least, you know, 40 plus seconds at least. Preferably more. It just depends on how long you can loop them and all that stuff. And yes, that means you can't be stealthy. You have to take the pressure off of your team. So you need to make sure you're chased. And then you also need to make sure that you do every totem that you pass if you have time. And if you don't have time, just note the location of the totem and come back later. The reason you do this is to counter Noed. And if there are still totems up and you know where they are, at least you know the locations where Noed is. So in order to have a successful game, the key is time management between survivors. You need to make sure that you're at least helping the team to take the load off of others. If you have the same people being chased and doing the saves, eventually someone is just going to die. And they're not going to be able to help with the generators. When you interchange the roles of being chased, getting the saves, doing the totems, and doing the generators, you have to make sure you contribute to all of these categories to have a successful game, especially in solo. As long as each player does their part, the game will go a lot better. Now, sometimes your teammates aren't able to hold up their end of the deal, but that's alright. Because games like this happen, and sometimes you just can't win them all, that's just how it goes. However, as long as you follow this list, it should make your solo queue experience a lot more pleasant. Other than that, there's not much else I can say about trying to improve your solo queue experience. Just make sure that you follow the structure for those builds because it gives you a net, you know, a higher net chance to actually survive those games because you'll be helping your team and you'll have a lot more ways to get information and help your team do the objectives, all that jazz, and then follow the list of the objectives that you need to make sure that you get done during the game. As long as you do that, you should be fine. Even if you don't survive, you should have a good game. The only other word of advice I can say is that you need to keep a positive mindset. You can't go in the game with a negative mindset, blaming your team and getting mad at every little thing that happens or wondering why the clotted is self-carrying in the corner. You need to make sure that you're thinking, what can you do? What can you do better? And how can you help your team get out of the match in the current situation? Hopefully all these tips can help you in your solo queue experience because, in my opinion, I think it, uh, it has helped me a lot. We're going to go ahead and end it there. I appreciate you guys watching. Now, before I send you off, I'm going to include, at the very end of this, a spirit match that I had that was very intense. And now I want you to keep an eye on my perks and how exactly the team functions and how I use these perks to benefit the team. It was a very intense game. We probably shouldn't have escaped, but I feel like my perks probably played a huge role in us actually escaping. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the match, and uh, I'll just see you guys later. Peace.